let's start in Nebraska. I, I mean, I think m most people have been following many people who, who listen to this program or anyways or watch this program have been aware of the ongoing um, attempt by uh, Omaha Senator Michaela Kavanaugh to um, filibuster just about every bill that has come up in the Nebraska Senate um, as a way of essentially uh, blocking the ban on a gender affirming care. And apparently the uh, Republicans in Nebraska have uh, come upon a, a new strategy, which is essentially to introduce the gender affirming care ban along with an abortion ban that would start at 12 weeks. And as you know, the first six weeks is virtually a majority of people who are pregnant don't even realize it. So uh, this <clears throat> it's a, it would be a drop from 20 weeks. And you're not even through uh, the first trimester at this point. Um, here is a... Um, Nebraska State Senator uh, Megan Hunt responding to uh, one of her Republican colleagues who complained about the filibuster attempts. Here we go. Senator Linehan talking about missing her grandchild's graduation. I hate that for you. I'm so sorry. Seriously, I, I would hate to have that happen to me. <clears throat> And I'm happy you're listening because I'm only asking you, we are only here doing this because of LB 574 period. I am not asking you to sit here through late nights to vote on these bills that we're dragging out. I'm asking you to love your family more than you hate mine. I'm asking you to love your family more than you hate mine. If your family wants you home to recover from surgery, maybe you should do that. <laughs> if you want to go see your grandson graduate from preschool, you should do that. Instead, you are here to drag out this session because you won't come off this bill that hurts my son. You hate him more than you love your own family, and that's why you're here. And so, you know, go to the graduation. Go recover from your surgery. We don't need you here. We need you to vote no or present not voting on 574. Because, you know, there's nothing else in this body that's affecting your family that way. Yeah, Senator Hunt is a is a queer woman herself, and she has a trans son. I mean the uh, the way that you are um, that that she is um, framing this is exactly. I mean, aside from it being you know just sort of um, the 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 substance of what she's talking about exactly on point, but the way that she's framing it is also exactly on point. Yeah, and and she is making it clear that she is not the problem they are the problem yeah right and instead what the uh, republicans have done and this uh, clip was from uh was from uh yesterday this morning i guess or maybe um uh i don't know when they when they uh, they started to advance this bill on tuesday by a single vote so in other words, the pressure in Nebraska to curtail a woman's or a right to choose or a person who can get pregnant right to choose uh, to not be pregnant um, was good enough or big enough to um, to basically bring one other person and break the filibuster, presumably. Yeah. And the idea is like, you know, I guess in uh, Nebraska, the idea of restricting and enforcing people to carry a pregnancy to term is a must-pass type of situation. 
right. in Nebraska. Um, what was really interesting in this uh, piece from the AP, on yet Wednesday, the day after lawmakers merged the abortion bill in the, uh, uh, limits with the trans health bill, um, Michaela Kavanaugh and uh, Senator Julie Slama, who I assume is a Republican, um, basically, Julie Slama said that conservatives were supporting the ban on gender affirming care to retaliate against Kavanaugh. She noted the ban did not initially have the 33 votes needed to survive. But then Michaela Kavanaugh got up and ran her mouth because she was overjoyed that the national media was here to give her some more attention. So that gave us 33 votes. Ah, Disgusting. look what you look made. Look what you made us He's do. Made exactly. us do. There we go. So ran it's her about mouth. That. I mean, what kind of? That's some harsh. Oh yeah. I mean, she got she, language. Uh, yeah, yeah, she she should have been in the kitchen. Um, but like I, th this is another example of what we're seeing across the country of Republican state legislatures retaliating against Democrats who are in the minority who are speaking up to protect trans people, to advocate for gun rights, to protect abortion access. Right? I mean, th this is like the Republicans in these le state legislatures trying to stamp out any dissent. I mean, we're, we're lucky that, at least in Nebraska, they're using the filibuster to their advantage there. But um, without people like Megan Hunt or Kavanaugh, this would have been the six week ban would have gone through and the initial trans affirming care ban would have gone through, which banned everything, including hormones. Now they've tried to set up a compromise position, the 12 week ban now it's just a ban on surgeries for if you're, you're under 19. But it's like, you can't, as we always say, you never compromise with these fundamentalists. It's incompatible with them. They'll always come back. It's a, they'll come back to do the rest later. And, and I will say, and we're going to talk to Ryan Grimm about this uh, in, in a moment, but what uh, Hunt does really effectively here is make it clear who is the problem. And what is the what? It, what are the different interests that are associated with this, and where the um, moral and practical and material authority s stands? And she, by framing it, you hate my family more than you love your own. It puts the pressure on them. It may not be effective in this instance because of the sheer numbers, but that is what the 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 national administration what the biden administration has failed to do on the debt ceiling and it's going to have material impact for people i understand like it, you know the the emotions are you know more immediate and raw i think in this instance in nebraska but the fact is is that we're going to end up with a deal that's going to hurt hundreds of thousands if not millions of americans because of the failure of the administration to properly communicate to the American public who the problem is. And, and, and part of it is I think they're just living in this incredible bubble. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe like they have trouble even seeing it themselves, but we'll talk more about that with Ryan Grimm.